and welcome back to the videos everyone i hope you guys are enjoying your weekend i am only a couple of days away from going to autocross week and i've been doing everything i can to get the civic ready for that i've spent the last like three days trying to rebuild the brake lines that go to the rear of the car because they were very rusty and they were original to the car and i figured if i'm going to be doing six back-to-back -back days of racing and pushing the car to the limit I don't want those on my car. I've been meaning to change them out for a while now, but I was like, if it's gonna be at any point, it's gotta happen now. And I wasn't gonna make a video on it just because they're just brake lines. However, there's a lot of things I had to tackle and overcome in the process. And so I figured it would be a good idea to make a video just so that way you guys can see everything I had to do and you guys can learn from my mistakes and also my creativity. So when you guys go to do something similar like this on your car, you guys are more well prepared. All right, so one of the first issues that I had to tackle was actually one that I created myself. Uh, I've had to redo these lines before, not the whole lines, but I've had to redo just where they come through the uh, subframe and the body going towards the rear. The previous owner patched the line with a compression fitting, which is not the way to do it. You need to flare the lines and use the proper fittings. So what I did when I fixed it myself, the proper way slash improper way, is I actually just sent the lines down through there, but uh, near the steering rack and then went back, when in reality, it's supposed to go right where those two flex lines are going and it's supposed to go between the body and the subframe. The place that I had it going was fine. The problem is, is it's going through the subframe. And so if the subframe ever needs to come down for any reason, I'd have to undo the brake lines and I don't want to do that. So the proper solution to all of this is to go between the body and the subframe. However, it's kind of tricky because that path is far from straight and it's a very tight fit. So what I did to overcome it is just get some braided dash three AN lines so that way I could just feed them right through and it wouldn't be an issue. However, you don't want to have too much braided soft line in your system because it can make for a squishy pedal. So I tried my best to eliminate the flexible lines as much as possible. So the way I went about doing this is I have some 3 16 copper nickel alloy coming off of the proportioning valve and they go to some adapters that adapt the hard line to the flex lines. These adapters are by Willwood and they convert my 3 16 tube nuts to the dash 3 lines. Those tube nuts are for a 3 16 line, but the thread on them is a 3 8 by 24. So that's what you're going to need to adapt them together. So this you'll see is where the soft lines come through the subframe and the body and they come to two more adapters that end up adapting it to some more hard line. Now this is a very long stretch of brake lines so I ended up using a pre-made piece of steel line that I got from the auto parts store. And then to secure it to the body, I ended up using two P-clamps with some self-tapper screws. So that way it's tucked up nice and tight along the frame rail and there's no issues with it hanging too low. All right, so after you come down and you come along the bottom of the vehicle, it's gonna come up to two more fittings and it's gonna come up to some more braided lines. The reason I went with braided lines back here is because it's the lines snake between the gas tank and the body and it would have been very tricky to get some hard lines in here. So I had two pre-made sections of AN lines to make life easier for me. The one going to the driver's side is a 24 inch section and the one going to the passenger side is a 36 inch section. Then after that, all these lines do is they travel underneath the frame rail through two more P clamps and then they adapt to more hard line that takes them up into the wheel well and to the mounting tab where it mates to the braided line that is going to take it to the trailing arm. Alright, so once you're back here, these braided lines that are coming to the rear trailing arm, they're from Chase Bays and I really like them. The quality and the fit and finish and the length on these rear ones are really nice. 
And when you're on the website, make sure you're aware of the two kits they offer. They have one for these Civics if you have rear discs, and they have one if you have rear drums. So whichever one you need, they got you. Now, I didn't do anything with these front brake lines, but I did order the full kit that allowed me to put braided lines on all four corners. And here's where things got interesting. These lines are also from Chase Bays from that same kit. And one of the weird things about these lines, while the fit and finish and quality is very good, they were about five to six inches longer than the factory line. So I wasn't really sure what to think about that or what to do with it, but I had an idea. They came with two mounting tabs. One that goes to this two point bracket right here on the knuckle. And then there was another one that was just had a single hole in it that looks like that and there's only one place to mount stuff on the factory lines which is right here there's no like additional whatever and this is a lot of brake line and I didn't want it all just up here in the front of the knuckle because I didn't want stuff rubbing on the wheel or just being not secure so what I did I don't know if this was their intention with the kit and I don't think it was but this is what I did was I just ran the line behind the fork and I used the shock bolt to attach that tab to the fork now I did have to take a step bit and drill out that hole and make it bigger in order for it to fit but it works and then I brought the line forward and I brought it through that tab and then it mounts to the caliper. I don't think that's how they had intended for you to run it, but that's kind of my thought process and I think that's what's gonna work best. It's gonna give everything a lot of play and it's gonna make sure everything's secured down because that other tab, I have no idea where else you're supposed to mount it. The other thing that you have to be careful of is because this is so much line and it is traveling quite a few directions, you gotta be careful of the wheel rubbing on it so what I did was I had the wheel put back on on both sides and I had somebody get in the car and cycle the steering wheel lock to lock and I made sure that there was nothing rubbing or binding because if this section here doesn't have enough slack it'll bind when you go to full left and then also you have to be careful that the line isn't rubbing on the wheel which I had a problem on the driver's side but I fixed it these brackets are not like fixed at a set location on the line. You can move the line through the bracket like so. And I know this isn't going to bind up when the suspension droops because currently it's up on jack stands and this is with the suspension all the way down and there's no binding at all. So I know I'm going to be good on that front. Alright, so for the last and final thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was flaring the lines. All those hard lines that I was using, especially the copper ones, are very soft and all the rental tools that I was getting from auto parts stores I was having a very hard time with. They were mushrooming the hard lines of very weird directions and I was having a very very hard time getting a very clean and precise flare. So what I did was I went to Napa and I found this kit. Not all Napas carry this on their shelves but some of them do and you can have them order it in. Go and pick yourself up the 165C Carlisle brake line flaring kit. Now what this does is it flares it just how you flare any other brake line, but this is a much more reliable and cleaner to use system than the other ones. You have your clamp blocks here, and you put your line in, and you use these two hex nuts to clamp it down. Now. This isn't really a how-to video, but I'm going to show you guys real quick just how you flare these lines. Is You take the appropriate uh, adapter, or die if you will, and you get your line set up inside the block. And what you're going to do is you want just enough line sticking out to match that first shoulder. So it's only going to be like a sixteenth of an inch. So. If I can get it on here right. So you're only going to have enough line coming out of there where if you put this up there, it's only going to meet 
that first shoulder right there is where you want the end of the line to go to. So you're going to figure out your length and then you're going to tighten down those screws and you're going to clamp it down. Now this kit comes with a reaming tool. So you're going to use this and between each step I'll take this and I'll clean out the tube. That allowed me to get a very clean and precise flare every time. So once that's clamped down and that's in, you're going to take this and this works just like all the rental tools, but it's just a lot more reliable. And it's a lot easier to use. You're going to back out that center screw. And it's hard to see with the lighting, but there's a center spike in there. And it's going to fit into the back of there. So you're going to put your line in, put this die in, and then you're going to screw this over the clamp block until it's all the way down. And with this in the hard line, with that center nipple in the hard line, and this on, you're going to take a wrench or a socket and you're going to tighten this down. And you're going to start to feel resistance and you're going to start to feel the tube moving and then it's going to kind of hit a wall and you're going to feel it stiffen up. That's when you go ahead and take this off. And you're going to take the die out and you're going to remove it and you're no longer going to use that for that flare. And you're going to put this back on and that center spike is going to make the rest of the flare. So you just go and put that on until it's all the way down and then tighten this down and it's the same process where you keep tightening and you're going to feel some resistance but you keep going and then all of a sudden you're going to feel it like hit a wall where it doesn't want to move anymore. Give it a little bit of a snug tight uh, wrench and then you're going to take this off and you're going to take these two screws apart and you're done. All I do then is I take this reamer tool and I clean it out one last time. The other thing is this kit comes with one of these cutters. You're going to want to use this every time you cut it because if you just use like a side cutters you're going to have a flat cut and it's going to crimp the tube and you don't want that. That's not flareable. With this you put it on the tube, you barely tighten down this screw and you're going to spin this over the tube and you're going to make one spin and every time you make a spin you're going to tighten it down ever so slightly and you're going to make another spin and you're going to tighten this down ever so slightly and make another spin. This kit has saved me I had three other rental kits and they all did not work. This kit is extremely reliable and it made it very easy and simple for me to do all my flares. And I've tested the car, I've bled it, nothing leaks, so I'm very happy with this kit. This is exactly what you need when flaring lines. Alright, so I hope that sums it up for you guys. The only other step you would have to do after that is bleeding the brakes. Now the way I did that was you have somebody in the driver's seat and you go to each wheel and you have them pump up the brake pedal three times and you break the bleeder and then you shut it and you'll have them pump it up again and you'll do that as many times as you need to at each wheel until you get nothing but fluid. There's no like air bubbles or nothing and the brake pedal has a lot of pushback. There's a lot of kits and everything that you can use to do it yourself that apply pressure without having somebody in the driver's seat. But that's how I've always done it and that's just how I do it. And that's a very reliable method. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but that's what you do. That's the last step you would need. So hopefully everything works well for autocross week. I have complete faith in this. I still need to go test drive it and make sure everything feels 100% under driving conditions but this is basically everything i had to do to build these brake lines and i hope this is helpful for you guys as well <laughs>